Insights on Brandon Turner's The Book on Rental Property Investing, narrated by Tabitha Mixon. Overview. Have you ever dreamed of making millions of dollars without having to hustle? Investing in rental property might be your future. Brandon Turner's The Book on Rental Property Investing, 2015, is a must-read for anyone interested in using real estate investing to build wealth or achieve financial independence. Turner imparts practical and exciting tools, tips, and strategies that investors around the world are using to build significant cash flow with rental properties. Both new and seasoned investors will learn how to create a workable plan, find incredible deals, analyze properties, form a team, finance rentals, and much more. Everything you need to become a millionaire rental property in rental properties. Rental properties are Brandon Turner's true business love. The great thing about them is that you can borrow money to increase the potential return on your investment. This is referred to as leverage. You don't have to have 100% of a property's purchase price on hand to buy it. Rental properties allow you to purchase large properties for a fraction of the cost of stocks or other investments. Besides, investing in rental properties gives you more free time and the ability to work hard for your future and pursue other business opportunities. You are directly responsible for the outcome of your investment when renting out a property. It's up to you to research a property before purchasing it and make sure it's in a good rental condition and performing at its best. That way, you won't have to rely on a board of directors in New York City to steer your company. You can personally and directly manage your investments. The real estate market will fluctuate, but the appeal of rental properties is that demand will never go away. People will always need a place to live, so real estate, unlike the latest tech trend or your brother's startup, is a long-term investment. Lastly, One of the most significant advantages of rental property investing is the proof of concept that has been passed down from millions of successful investors. Yes, market crashes like the one in 2007 happen, but rental property owners who are investing for the long term did not suffer as much and were able to recover. successful rental property investing. Thinking the correct ideas is the first and probably most essential step in becoming a successful rental property investor. To put it another way, you need to cultivate an inside mindset rather than an external activity. Step two is flipping the switch in your brain and completely committing to a future that includes generating money through real estate. Then, the right plan is the third element to success in rental property investing. You outline your vision for where you want to go and how you want to get there in the plan. Your plan provides solutions to queries like what is the final goal? What are your plans? What type of approach do you want to employ? What sort of properties are you looking to purchase? How often? Things that subtract from your wealth are liabilities, whereas assets help you build your wealth. Acquiring the correct assets and avoiding liabilities is the fourth step in attaining success via rental properties. The fifth stage is to manage the appropriate metrics. All your efforts will be for naught if you are unable to handle the assets you have bought. Rental properties vary from most other asset classes in that they must be maintained and handled on a regular basis. Of your team. First, your spouse or significant other may be the most essential member of your team. They have a big influence on your emotional state, goals, free time, money, future, and every other area of your life, regardless of whether they care about real estate or not. Second, a mentor or accountability partner is the next person you should have on your team. When things become rough or you need a boost of encouragement, this is the person you turn to. Third, the next person you'll need to recruit for your team is an excellent real estate agent. Even if you intend to locate your deals through other, more unusual means, having a good working connection with a real estate agent while you grow your rental portfolio is beneficial. A good real estate agent can help you better understand the real estate market including which locations and property types are doing well in terms of sales or rentals. Fourth, unless you want to pay cash, you'll need to establish a relationship with a lender or lenders for funding. The fifth essential person is a contractor or handyman who can do repairs for your properties. 
because they are hard to find on short notice, it's a good idea to establish a relationship with a contractor before one is needed. Sixth, even if you are competent to manage your own bookkeeping, you may want to hire a bookkeeper to keep track of your income and spending and prepare your accounts for tax season. Bookkeepers keep an accurate record of incoming credits and outgoing debits, allowing you to keep track of how your business is doing at all times. They reconcile the transactions they've documented on paper with the associated bank account once a month to ensure that every cent is accounted for. Seventh, a skilled CPA also is essential. A certified public accountant, CPA, is a professional accountant that provides financial advice, generates financial reports, makes tax recommendations for your firm, and prepares personal and commercial tax returns. Eighth, when you invest in real estate, the question isn't whether you'll be sued, but when. The more wealth you accumulate, the more likely it is that someone will want to steal part of it away. This is why having a skilled lawyer on your side may be quite beneficial. Ninth, it's a good idea to find an insurance broker. A broker can look around for the best deal and coverage from several insurance providers and can modify your policy if required without you having to go elsewhere. And finally, if you do not want to do it yourself, you will require the services of a property manager to care for your investment. Even if you intend to manage the property yourself, establishing a connection with a local property manager is a, a rental idea. property. When evaluating a rental property, there are numerous key aspects to consider, but the two most crucial are cash flow and appreciation. The money left over after all the bills have been paid is referred to as cash flow. Cash flow is equal to income minus expenses. The equity acquired when the property value rises is referred to as appreciation. Because there are few good techniques to predict future appreciation, it's usually best to concentrate on cash flow. Consider any appreciation as icing on the cake, not the aim. Knowing the fair market rent, which is the price someone would be willing to pay to use your property for a specific length of time, is crucial for determining revenue. It's influenced by variables such as location, number of rooms, amenities like parking and air conditioning, and the property's size. Remember that underestimating expenditures is one of the leading causes of landlords losing money month after month and finally going bankrupt. The mortgage is not the only expense you should take into account. Consider the following as well. Taxes, insurance, flood insurance, vacancy, repairs, water, sewer, garbage, gas, electricity, landscaping, property management, Rental and property other expenses. Types. Simply wanting to invest in real estate isn't enough. You must have a strategy for where you will put your money. What type of rentals are you looking for? First, a single-family home, or SFR, is the most prevalent type of house. It generally has one kitchen, one bathroom, and a few bedrooms. And it's on its own piece of property. The most popular form of real estate in existence is a single-family house, which is frequently referred to as the American dream. SFR prices are determined by what other similar houses have previously sold for. Thus, they fluctuate drastically depending on local market conditions. Second, buildings having more than one unit are known as multifamily properties. Multifamily housing can range in size from two units in a duplex to hundreds of units in a huge apartment complex. The majority of multifamily buildings are held by real estate speculators who rent them out to people who can't or won't buy a single-family house. Multifamily housing, if acquired correctly, may provide positive cash flow from day one. Furthermore, rents can be raised a little amount per unit or costs reduced, and the ripple effect of these adjustments can result in significant gains in cash flow. Third, Condos are a type of property ownership structure in which several individuals own individual units inside a single complex. Rather than having a single owner who leases out all the apartments, each unit is owned by an individual who either lives in it or rents it out. Condos may be good investment opportunities due to their low operating costs. Fourth, townhomes are similar to condos in that they frequently consist of numerous units, each of which is separately owned, all inside the same complex. Townhouses, on the other hand, have less of an apartment vibe and are generally more than one story tall. 
Fifth, a property that has been foreclosed and is now owned by a bank is referred to as a REO, or real estate-owned property. A REO property is generally in some disarray because most REO homes have been empty for months, if not years, issues including odors, mildew, and vandalism are frequent. They are dubbed fixer-uppers because they need to be fixed before being rented. Many individuals avoid REO homes entirely because they do not want to deal with the issues. As a result, REO investors will face less competition and have a higher chance of finding a fantastic offer. After all, banks, unlike most house sellers, are not emotional beings. They are unlikely to be insulted by a poor offer and will evaluate it rationally rather than emotionally. As a result, banks are frequently ready to reduce their asking price in order to get the property sold and off their books. When you first start investing in real estate, you'll probably hear individuals refer to a property's location as A, B, C, or D. A neighborhood gets a grade, just like grades at school. However, the classification is a little more subjective than a school test. A Class A site is one with the most modern structures, the best schools, the hottest restaurants, the wealthiest individuals, and the most expensive real estate. This is definitely the nicest location available, and only the top tenants are interested in renting there. The same notion applies to a Class A structure. It is often newer, probably less than 10 years old, and hence requires less maintenance. Because of the high demand for an easy investment, Class A properties often command the highest rent but may produce a lower quantity of cash flow. Demand is higher, hence the purchase price is higher, resulting in lesser cash flow. A Class B location may be slightly older than a Class A location, but it may still have good restaurants, schools, and residents. Although these may be considered middle class, they will attract more blue-collar employees who live paycheck to paycheck. The same notion applies to a Class B building. A Class C location is likely a low-income neighborhood with residences that are 30 or more years old. People who are on government assistance or who have low-wage jobs are drawn to this region. It is likely to have a lot of check cashing and pawn shops and similar enterprises. The same principle applies to a Class C building. It is most likely over 30 years old and appears to be in good condition. However, numerous repairs will almost certainly be required, as well as continuous maintenance, but it will be far more affordable. A Class D area is not found in every city, but you'll know when you encounter one. Even cops are often hesitant to visit these areas, which are rife with crime and drug use and sales. A Class D structure is likely to be older than a Class C structure, but with significantly greater neglect. Most likely, the property will require extensive renovations before it can be occupied. Although Class D houses are typically inexpensive, finding decent tenants can be Properties difficult of the and dangerous. ideal property. Two-bedroom apartments are normally acceptable and extremely frequent while shopping for a multifamily property. Single-bedroom and studio apartments are equally popular, but they tend to attract a more temporary tenant, so expect a higher rate of turnover. The best rentals are three- or four-bedroom properties since they attract long-term tenants, which reduces your vacancy costs. Furthermore, three-bedroom houses are the easiest to sell, which might be advantageous when the time comes. Stable tenants require a parking spot for their automobiles. Nearly all good tenants like off-street parking, so hunt for properties with this amenity. When investing in single-family homes, a house without a garage may be difficult to attract a steady, long-term tenant. Tenants tend to gather a lot of belongings and want storage space. And when searching for single-family houses, seek ones where the tenant can directly pay for all utilities, including water, sewer, garbage, electricity, and heat. When tenants aren't responsible for their own heating, they are more likely to leave windows open in the winter or run the air conditioner all day in the summer. Look for residences with smaller yards to keep maintenance to a minimum. However, recreational space is critical in attracting a long-term tenant, so make sure the tenant has a place to run around and have fun. All in all, there is no hard and fast rule for what constitutes an excellent rental home. Instead, the ideal rental property is one that assists you Financing in achieving your objectives. properties. Understanding finance is similar to putting together a toolbox. The more tools you have, the larger the projects you can take on, and the more successful you will be. You can finance your rental properties in a variety of ways. 
Many investors prefer to buy an investment property outright using all cash. To be clear, even when investors use phrases like all cash, no actual cash is transacted. The buyer usually brings a check to the title company, which then writes a check to the seller. The money is sometimes sent through a bank wire transfer, although all cash is the simplest type of funding because there are usually no issues. Most investors do not have the necessary funds in their bank accounts. Conventional loans are the types of loans you'd get from a bank, credit union, or mortgage lender in your area. They're pretty similar to the kind of loan you'd get if you were buying a house to live in. Although loans for personal residences often have low down payment alternatives, a normal rental property loan will require a substantial down payment, often 20% to 30%, depending on the lender. The difference between what is due on a property and what it could sell for is referred to as equity. You may be able to use some of the equity in your home to purchase rental properties if you own it. Another innovative way to invest in real estate is through partnerships. This can be quite beneficial because two or more people can work together to compensate for each other's flaws and Managing achieve incredible results. So you've successfully navigated the perplexing world of real estate to purchase a rental property and are now the proud owner of an income-generating asset. However, if you don't maintain the property properly, all of that time, money, and effort could be wasted. Actually, the strategy employed to handle property can make the difference between succeeding and failing as a landlord. If you treat it like a business, managing tenants is not as difficult as it may appear. This entails continuing to learn, grow, and network. It entails putting in place processes to deal with issues. It entails a constant effort to improve. Owning a business also requires establishing a policy for how things should be done and adhering to it. This includes establishing and enforcing regulations. Setting boundaries and ensuring that others respect those boundaries is an important part of owning a business. Lastly, landlording is no exception to the rule that preparation is crucial to success. The significance of preparation cannot be overemphasized, from selecting the ideal renter Five to setting up principles books. of rental ownership. First, as you gain experience as a real estate investor, you'll have the primary responsibility of efficiently managing your portfolio. You're still a manager, whether you hire a property manager or manage your own renters. Financial independence may be the objective, but it will take time to achieve. Second, one of your investment goals should be to improve the income your rental properties provide as you progress through your career. Vacancy will be one of your major cash flow drains, and the easiest method to keep vacancy rates low is to maintain a competitive rent. Third, another activity you'll have to keep track of is lowering your spending. Some landlords go too far with this. You shouldn't jeopardize your tenant's right to peaceful enjoyment of their home merely to save money. You can, however, save money in a variety of ways. These include always being on the lookout for better insurance rates, switching to water saving and energy saving appliances, or transferring some payments to the tenant, like the water or electricity bill. Fourth, carry out the strategy you devised. Your career aim will almost certainly alter over time as it should. A goal without a strategy is simply a wish, so keep working on it and don't give up even if your plan changes. Finally, remember that it is your responsibility and obligation to give back to others, regardless of their level of accomplishment. You may help in a variety of ways, both monetarily and educationally. Brandon Turner is a real estate investor, author, and entrepreneur with over 500 rental units under his belt. He's the vice president of Bigger Pockets, as well as the co-host of the Bigger Pockets podcast, and the author of four books about real estate investing. Turner has been featured in a number of online and print publications, including Forbes.com, Entrepreneur.com, and Money Magazine. Brandon Turner's writing style is conversational, and he often addresses the reader directly, making it a comfortable and easy read. As a rental property investor himself, Turner has plenty of personal stories to share throughout the book, containing examples readers can learn from. He also includes several pictures of properties to illustrate these stories and graphs and charts when needed to explain data. We hope data. you enjoyed the insights on Brandon Turner's The Book on Rental Property Investing. Purchase the book to learn more.